a little bit older, but not much, and we're underway. Excited to see both these guys fight. This, uh, they're making their Cagezilla debut, so. Yeah, Rios from a heck of a gym in Lorton, Virginia. And as Charles and I were talking about, Romar just an awfully tough guy with a wrestling and karate background. Hands really low for Black Knoll. And you're seeing that karate background play immediately as he controls the range, gets out of there. His hands are a little low, but he has very good movement. He's getting out of the way of those big shots, and he's controlling and dictating the pace of this fight. Absolutely, Charles. I like to call it a fighter's touch. When you can hit the other guy, and he can't hit you. It does look like Riaz is throwing for the fences, though, so I want to keep those hands up. Big uppercut landed there. Yes. And this is what we were talking about. In the clinch, he has to deal with that strength advantage, and Romar was able to knock off a few powerful shots in that clinch up against the cage. Yeah, Riaz kind of stood still, left his head still, and just gave Block now that uppercut. You know, and Romar with his hands down, he's very comfortable. He puts them up when he goes to engage. However, he needs to make sure he's out of the way because if Riaz is able to make that adjustment and close the distance, he won't have his hands up to block the incoming shots. Absolutely. Both fighters measuring each other right now. Ooh, low, low kick. And folks, if you've ever seen a fight live, you can hear when it goes low. It makes a very distinct noise. And the fighter usually makes a pretty distinct yeah. noise, too. <laughs> the fighter does as well. He's got five minutes, and, you know, it's always best. You want to sit down. You want to shake it out. You want to keep moving. You know, you get a, you get a pretty mean stomach ache when these things happen. Yeah. So you really want to take advantage of the time and, and really make sure it's out of the way so you can go back in there and, and fight to your fullest potential. And no one begrudges Black Knoll or any fighter taking the full five minutes if they need. Not at all. you do with new fighters and searching the internet to see the background of these guys and see if they have prior fights. I came upon Romar Blackmall selling Nissans in his former job. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah, he was <laughs> great. Made me want to go out and buy you know, like a 370Z or something. Well, I don't think he's interested in the car dealership right now. He no, wants to get right back now, in this fight. Last thing on his mind, absolutely. Sh Sean's path gets him going once again. Yeah, I was about to say, Riaz is throwing those, those kicks, trying to hit the inner thigh, but it's easy to miss the mark when you're throwing that kick. Blacknell answered with a big right. Oh, uh, another one. I didn't see that one. You know, it, it clipped him on the way out, but this is something that happens when you have a lot of low kicks coming your way, and, and Blacknell keeps going with this in-and-out approach. He's getting away from the shot. He's avoiding it, but that outside leg kick becomes an inside leg kick if you shift your legs and are moving at a, at a, uh, a bad range. Sean Spath probably explaining to Riaz, look, next time it's a point, man, keep him up. Don't, like, don't take any chances. Yeah, so at, you know, making their, their debut here, sometimes it's kind of hard to find your range early on. So let's hope Absolutely. that Riaz learns from that, gets it up, and, uh, and we won't have this problem again. It is a contact sport after all. Sean Spath checking with Black Knoll, giving him the thumbs up. Black Knoll taking less time than I would have taken, that's for sure. And here we go, back to the middle of the ring. No. Big right hand landed. And that's the end of the first round. Not a lot of, uh, of punches thrown by Riaz. He's relying mostly on the kicks, whereas Black Knoll is just the opposite. Yeah, exactly. And like Charles said, might be by design from Riaz's corner. Like, use your length, use your kicks, don't get too close to Keep your distance. Yeah, you know, he's going to want to ride that storm out because when you saw when he threw those low kicks without a punch to set them up, he got countered with a hard shot. Now, some of that power will go away if the cardio starts to get tested. So keeping at range, controlling the distance, that's something that's going to force Ron Romar to control his own tempo and not overexert himself when the fight happens. Charles, I'm glad you brought up the cardio because I don't think a lot of people realize just what a huge factor that is in all fight sports. Uh, you know, you can get through, especially if you first like, get through the first round uh, largely on adrenaline. But boy, oh boy, there's those second rounds and you see how deep your gas tank goes. It, really yeah, get exactly. You know, in the amateur ranks, it's so important because you can get away with 
you know, uh, lack of skill and athleticism by just being the better conditioned fighter and putting a pace that they can't match. Absolutely. A little more measured start to this round. Another leg kick. Uh, going a little bit upstairs. Well, three, two, one, doubling up. Now, Romar was dropping his hands to block those body kicks, and it's good he was a uh, big right hand landed. Oh. Excuse me, uh, left hand. And he's turning it up now. He's got him against the cage. Peeing off. Oh, that one got through clean. Yeah, as soon as he has extends that guard, Romar times it perfectly, goes right underneath. And Blackmail's right out of range when uh, Riaz goes for the counter. Riaz is really respecting oh, Black Null's power. Nice, yeah, nice teep. Back to the low kick again. Nice outside leg kick that time, switching up a bit. Riaz continues to throw these single leg kicks, and he's going to get countered just like that. You know, you got to set him up. You have to use your punches. He's he's dealing with this range, and he's not he's not comfortable there. But when he just runs, oh, big shot landed. Oh, oh, that was a knee to the head. Sean Spatz going to separate him. That was the best string of punches we've seen so far from Riaz. Nice big knee there to close it out, too. And that could be a confidence booster. Big shots to the body, upstairs. Yeah, I kind of get the impression Black Nose is riding it out. Yeah, not, a, not a pretty exchange there at the end at all. No. All right, now we're going deep into the gas tanks, fellas. Third round, only two-minute rounds, but still, first time out of the gate. You got people watching, and your family's in the cage, your adrenaline is pumping. You may hit that wall, you may get that adrenaline dump. We're going to see what these fighters are made of. Looks like... Well, you know, Riaz certainly came to play. You know, after a tough first round, he's come back with a vengeance, and he's gotten a lot of confidence, especially in respecting... Black Nile's power. He's coming after him now, and he's really making sure that Black Nile knows that he's throwing some leather, too. Well, both fighters breathing heavy through their mouth now, so see what they have here in the, uh, in the final round. You see Black Nile, he's still, still <laughs> rubbing down there like he's uh, still in some discomfort, so see how that affects him in this third round. Black Nile opening himself up. Every punch he throws, he's dropping the other hand and leaving himself wide open. Yeah, throwing them from the parking lot. I'll bet you they hurt, but boy, the opportunity yeah. for a counter is there, isn't it, Charles? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, it's good to block. Riaz had a great guard. He rode the wave and he circled out. But there are good opportunities to throw those hooks back and make him put his hands up. And a strange strategy here by Black Gnaw, if you see when they, when they get in the clinch, Blacknall just absorbs the punishment. Yeah, I think Blacknall took another low knee. Uh, you know, it could be, but he's, he's having a tough time dealing with this. Yeah. I mean, there's certainly a cardio uh, advantage in Riaz. His gloves are definitely not protecting his head. And of course, if you score on this bout, you're looking at this relentless assault by Riaz. That's at a standing eight count. Standing eight at it from referee Sean Spath, probably well-timed. Yeah, Black Gnaw is not in a good place right now. He is in a lot of discomfort. Oh, Riaz's corner is imploring him to go, go, go. Yeah, it's time to put the foot yeah, on the gas pedal now. Yeah, see if can put now. this fight away. I don't think those knees are going to do it, but maybe. 
If they start to land, Sean Spath will stop it. That is one of the few punches I've seen Blacknall throw from the clinch here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I think Blacknall took another shot. Yep. Nice knee out of Blacknall, turning his back. His explosiveness getting out of the clinch has really left him. He needs to rely on his punches, keep the distance, stay away from where Riaz is having that advantage. In the clinch, right, like right here, you know, there you go. Push off, get out of the way, and start picking him apart from the distance. But it looks like he's tired. Yeah, and he's running out of time to make something happen here in this third round. And there's the fight. And just like that, there's the horn. Really impressive finish from Riaz, who had a very tough first round, took a lot of punishment, but made the adjustment and came back hard. The third round was by far his best round for yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. So how do you score round two? That one's up in the air. So I give, <laughs> I give um, the first round to Blacknall. Definitely the third round to Riaz, and and I think the uh, second round is up in the air. We'll see what the judges think. You know, the beginning of the round, uh, Blacknall continued to use the momentum he had gained from that first round. Uh, but the, the cardio caught up with him, and he just couldn't quite keep that pace. And I actually think Riaz stole that round in the end with his aggression and with the power shots he landed. Totally agree. As the one and only Chris Fuller gets ready to make his way back into the cage to announce our winner. Beautiful setup here at Cage Hill, it is, gentlemen. If you're watching our video, you can see it is a well put on show. Speaking of the show, there's Chris reading the scorecards as the two fighters hug it out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecard for a decision. All three judges score the bout 29-27 for your winner. Out of the red corner, Osama Ruiz! Charles, just like we talked about that second round, I'm guessing the judges gave it to Riaz, and there he is. But you know what? And I will say it probably 10 times this broadcast, the amateur cage is a classroom. That's right, that's right. You know, uh, Romar has a lot of...